Hello again, my subscribers. Today we are doing a review. As the thumbnail suggests, the movie I am reviewing today will be The Northman. You can see my reaction video to the trailer for The Northman in the description box below. If you haven't seen the movie yet, I recommend you see it because I will be getting into some spoiler territory. I'll do my best not to reveal the ending because like I said, I want you guys to see it first. The Northman is the newest period piece from writer and director Robert Eggers, best known for directing The Witch and The Lighthouse. The story revolves around a young prince named Amleth. After his uncle Fjolnir, played by Clay's Bang, kills his father, King Arvindil, played by Ethan Hawke. Amleth flees the kingdom and grows up among the Northmen, or Vikings as they're called. Now as an adult, played by Alexander Skarsgård, Amleth teams up with Olga, played by Anya Taylor-Joy, to save his mother, Gruden, played by Nicole Kidman, and kill Fjolnir, who now lives in exile in Iceland after being overthrown by Harold of Norway. If you remember my reaction video, I was looking forward to this movie. Unfortunately, the film tanked at the box office, and it's easy to see why. Although it is the most mainstream film he's made to date, it's still a Robert Eggers movie, for better or worse. To my mind, it's for the better. Yes, it's an epic tale of revenge, but it's the filthiest epic tale of vengeance I have ever seen. There isn't a single clean scene in this movie, except for the fantasy sequence involving the Valkyrie. And if you're not familiar with Robert Eggers' work, you will be put off by the approach to this kind of filmmaking. Now, what do I mean by dirty? I certainly don't mean sexual or graphic in its profanity. What I mean is just the look. The fact that these people are not clean. They don't look like they just had a shower. They look like they probably would have in that time period. This same approach can be seen in The Witch and The Lighthouse. It's a new way of making a period piece and it's a way that I welcome. Absolutely. For one, it's more realistic and less Hollywood. One thing I noted right off the bat is the spelling of certain words like Valkyrie, Odin, Freya, and Valhol, or Valhalla. Mm. Eggers is not one to shy away from authenticity in his films, whether it's the way the family spoke in The Witch or the heightened sailor speech in The Lighthouse. The customs and rituals were also fascinating to watch, which brings me to the religious and supernatural aspects. My mother and I wondered whether or not Eggers was going to use supernatural aspects in this movie the same way he used them in The Witch and The Lighthouse. Well, he does, and he does it well. There is a religious part to it, but it's downplayed considerably. There's even mention of Christianity and its emergence in that area. But they don't dwell on it too much because that's not what the movie is about. But you can't tell a movie about Nordic men and Vikings without bringing the religious parts into it because much like Western culture with Christianity, it's so ingrained in the Norse culture. 
Another thing that people will notice is the similarities between this story and the stories of Hamlet, which Amleth is an anagram of, Beowulf, and Macbeth to some degree. It must be stressed, however, that William Shakespeare borrowed from multiple histories and stories from numerous cultures. So you'd be hard pressed to call this an unofficial adaptation of Shakespeare. But Shakespeare wasn't the only writer who pulled from other cultures. J.R.R. Tolkien did the very same thing, and the Tolkien influence can't be missed in this movie. Between destiny being a key element, and even down to the naming of swords, which this movie has a sword named Dregor. I hope I pronounced that correctly. It may be well to note that Robert Eggers pulls from P Sir Peter Jackson's playbook of fantasy filmmaking with shot composition, especially the landscape shots. But not once does he sacrifice his own voice as a filmmaker. Now on to the actors. Alexander Skarsgård is good as Amleth. On the surface, one could say he doesn't emote a lot, but his emotional depth is so subtle that if you're not paying attention, you'll miss it. Anya Taylor-Joy is excellent as Olga. Not once do you think about her past roles. Clay's bang is appropriately cunning as Fjolnir, and Nicole Kidman is a chameleon in this movie. You forget that it's her sometimes. I'll be disappointed if she doesn't get nominated for her work in this movie. Overall, The Northman is an experience that I think was marred by poor marketing and the COVID-19 pandemic. Luckily, it's finding new life on streaming services like Peacock and Voodoo, but it feels like a movie that should have been experienced in the movie theater. I'm disappointed in myself for not doing that. You become instantly immersed in this world and the story Robert Eggers gives you, all while he's telling a familiar story about revenge and the hero's journey. So that's my review for today. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this. Subscribe to get more content. I upload every Saturday. Hit the notification bell to get notified. So like the Facebook page to get notified of new videos. Thank you so much for watching. Please stay safe and healthy. And remember, it's chaos. Be calm.